Hi, I'm Nick Einhorn, and in the next few moments, I'll be reviewing Sans Mine's Vanishing Ring. Now, first of all, the packaging is absolutely beautiful. Uh, it comes complete with a ring for you to practice with. It looks like a very expensive diamond ring, so that's very nice. The uh, ring box itself is velvet. Um, it looks like a very expensive quality ring box, uh, but it does look normal. It does look like a regular chunky ring box, uh, and that's really nicely uh, designed. I and mean, I have to tell you, somebody has gone to a lot of time, a lot of effort, and a lot of cost in designing this, because the prop itself is a thing of beauty. It really is like a James Bond-style gimmick. Um, this is not a trick in and of itself. You've got to use this en route to something else. You're going to make someone's ring disappear. You're going to make it reappear somewhere else. So don't think that when you spend your $140, or however much it is, um, you're going to have a new routine. You won't you'll have the ability to take a ring and make it vanish in a very, very clean manner and quite a theatrical manner, but it isn't a trick on its own. It just depends on how you want to use it. So first of all, let me explain that if you were to take a ring, and it, it genuinely can be almost any ring, um, chunky rings or rings with very, very large um, settings are not ideal for this. Um, some of them won't work, but there's very clear information on the online instructional DVD or video um, that runs you through what's good and bad about those types of rings. But the ring goes into the box, the box is shut, and then as soon as it's opened again, the ring is vanished. Now what's really great about it is not only has it vanished, but it gives you the ability to steal it without being seen so that you can then load that into something else or do something else with the ring. So I will say it again, this isn't a trick on its own, it's only a great item if you then have something to do with the ring. Now, on the uh, trailer, the rather enthusiastic Australian man says that um, you can get the spectator to vanish their own ring, which means you can concentrate on your presentation. I would not agree with that at all, because if I gave this to a spectator to vanish their own ring, I would be very, very concerned. I don't think it's advisable in pretty much any situation, in a real world situation, to allow someone to put the ring in the box, close it, and then open it again. Why is that not advisable? Because as soon as they do that, although they can't see it, they're going to feel it and they're going to hear it. So unless you jump in and take that box from them almost immediately, which would make the alarm bells ring anyway, the first thing they're going to do is want to know where that ring is. And the first thing they're going to do is inspect the box a little bit more closely. So I would never in a million years give this box out for someone to vanish their own ring. I think it's absolutely fine to put the ring in yourself, close it up, and then give them the box. And now you're in a very safe situation where they can open it um, and it genuinely has gone and they can't see it and they can't hear it. But because you were able to do that little moment there, um, it was possible to sneak the ring out. So let me make it very clear. You will not in my opinion, unless you're making a TV show and you're filming it on the street for a YouTube channel or something, uh, I think it's very doubtful that you would ever want to give that to a spectator to vanish their own ring. Having said that, it's still a beautiful item. Um, it is something that I am I'm sure that I'm going to be using in my show as part of a larger routine. Um, it's very, very well made. Um, it's pretty surefire. I would feel very comfortable using this on stage. I think it looks like something very classy. Um, the routines that come with this, it's all on online instruction, and will say, say or say, however you pronounce it, um, goes through a, a lot of detail on both the, the gimmick itself, um, how to make it work, what kind of rings to use, and then talks you through a couple of routines. Now, one of the routines that he uses uh, or performs is a ring to kiwi fruit. Now, I can tell you now, if I were to borrow an expensive ring and it were to end up inside a kiwi fruit, I think in most situations, certainly in London, um, I'd get a punch on the nose. Um, I think it's disrespectful. I think it's just plain wrong to borrow an object from someone that is as delicate as a ring um, and shove it in a piece of fruit. I think it's just unbelievable. There's so many places you can make a ring end up. Why would you want to make it all gunky and yucky? Um, for that person. I, I know it might be strong magic, but honestly, um, 
doesn't make you a nice person if you do that. So there are different things explored. There's a ring to um, envelope, sealed envelope. And of course, there's lots of items on the market where you can find a ring inside a, uh, a prop of some sort. Nest of wallets, maybe. Who knows? Um, but there's loads of places that a ring can end up. So I would highly recommend this. I think it's excellent quality. It's not cheap. As I said, it's currently $140. Um, but I think it's worth it if you're going to use it. So I think you'll be very happy with your purchase and congratulations to the guys at Sands Mines for having the uh, patience uh, to see this project through because it really is something of beauty. And I think, you know, if you haven't bought it and then you see a friend that's got it, you're going to want, want to buy one uh, just to play with it because it really is an amazing gimmick.